so The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Life here at Bruton High School is unique in comparison to schools around York County because we're probably the smallest by quite some, you know, a, a bit. Like, I know my graduating class is somewhere around 150 students. And so you multiply that by four, you got about 600 students in a high school. That's like, you know, maybe half a high school, you know, somewhere else. One thing that's special is that all of us came together when we were little, and so we've all pretty much stayed through high school. It's just a small community. You get to know everybody. You get to love everybody. And even if something crazy were to happen, um, everybody would still come together if need be. It's school, so like, you know, school's okay, but what, you know, what makes your day is the people. I mean, everyone gets along, like, no one's really afraid to go and talk to someone like, oh, I don't belong, or oh, I don't. Like, if you know maybe, like, two or three people from different things, you basically are, you know, you're pretty good with everyone. I just like the atmosphere. It's smaller compared to other schools, and so everyone's very close because of that. Everyone's, uh, everyone knows everyone. Everyone has their friend groups, but everyone's friend group involves multiple friend groups, and so everyone's kind of, everyone knows everyone, and it's, it's just a good time. Every day, they are in that band room practicing. I've been wanting to donate to Locks of Love for a while now, but it was just not long enough. It was about an inch off, and so I figured, hey, you know, I'll just grow it out for a whole year, and then, it's got to be long enough by then. And um, the night after cafe night, I actually went ahead and got it snipped off and donated to Locks of Love. I plan to go to college, and I want to major in OT, which is occupational therapy, and I want to minor in Spanish. I want to start with kids, and then I eventually want to um, work with older adults that have a lot, had a stroke and lost all their memory. Um, I'm going to start with kids because usually they're easier and they're much better and then the older you get the more stubborn you'll get and so they'll be set in their ways and hopefully by working with kids I'll have the patience and the ability to work with older adults. Yeah. Memory loss is a big thing. Um, I just think it's crazy how one day you can be completely normal and the next day you have no idea how you got here or how you did this or how to cut or how to eat and I just want to figure out the, I guess the science behind it of how it can just go away in a blink of an eye and how it can come back slowly. I like math, science, uh, that, kind of, that kind of thing. So I was, I've applied to a bunch of schools under uh, mathematics as my degree choice, uh, maybe doing some of the computer science. This is a song that I'd like to dedicate to my mom. I went ahead and was interviewed and went through the whole application process be, to become the drumline captain here. And that has actually influenced me to want to teach music in the long run. So I'll be attending Christopher Newport University in this coming fall to become a music education major. We ran the four by eight and it was close and everyone ran their best and were able to get a fourth or fifth place. So yeah, and then that was exciting. I had to bowl my 500, so it was, I mean, it was a good day. The Bruton swim team is really good. It's a really small group of us. Uh, there's not too many, but swimming, it, it gets, it's just so hype. And like watching all your teammates do really well. And this year we did really well at States. Everyone had a good meet. And it was just fun to have like, kind of like a last meet with all our swim team pals. And... Freshman year, um, when I was kind of getting to learn everybody. The drum major at the time, he played piano. The drum set player at the time for jazz band, he was also a drumline captain. And they were going to do something, and I came over and I was like, hey, that sounds really cool. And he was like, you know what? We could use a guitarist. Yeah, we had this like little band, and, and it was so cool because they were all seniors, and they had asked a freshman you know, to come play with him. So that was just like, 
you know. This year in my basketball team was probably one of the fondest memories because not only did we play well, we really, really clicked as a team. It was one big family and we definitely lived by that saying, we all we got for sure. I liked all the trips we took for Christmas to Florida. Every year was usually pretty great. Uh, visiting my cousins, we have five cousins. That's always really fun, really great. Make cookies and they, have a, they had a trampoline for a while. I went last spring break to France um, and that was great. I went with my best friend, uh, Ethan, and uh, the whole French, like not the whole French class, but all the French class kids are, yeah, they're great. So it was, it, was, it was a good time. One of the last home basketball games that I went to, we, we rushed the court after they, it was tight, it was a close victory. We rushed the court and uh, afterwards got yelled at for it. But I mean, it was, it was exciting. I'm, I'm going to Italy this spring break with my friend uh, McKenna, who used to go to Bruton, known her for a really long time. Um, she's in Italy now because her dad's uh, military um, and they moved there recently. Every Christmas we'd go to my grandma's house. And I remember we, my sister and I, my older sister and I, had been asking for sleds for years because, you know, we, occasionally we get snow here in Virginia and we wanted to sled a little bit. And so we had finally gotten them and they were really nice, like the two-seater ones. And I just remember that was, that was pretty amazing. My kindergarten birthday was, we had a big luau at my house. It was either my dad or my uncle. Somebody split their pants and it was really, really funny. We moved across the country. So we originally lived in Washington State, like right before I started high school. And then um, we moved from there to here and we drove you can't fly, you have to take your stuff with you, like paints and a bunch of weird stuff, like paintings. And we made it into a road trip, and so we stopped and we saw like an old battlefield. It was like Custer's Last Stand, and we saw the Field of Dreams. Nine one one, where is your emergency? Oh my God, there's been a horrible accident. Come quickly. Okay, ma'am, where's the accident? It's, it's on East Rochambeau in front of Bruton High School. It's okay. really bad. Okay, ma'am. Is anyone injured? Yes, there's some, someone that's been thrown out of the vehicle. I think they didn't wear their seatbelt. Okay, ma'am. Help is on the way. Okay, thank you. Hurry up. Oh! oh. Tyler, wake up! Wake up! Tyler, Are you okay? Up. Tyler, wake up! I can't get out. I am oh, so oh, sorry. Oh, 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 that's a lot. I don't know what happened. Come on back here. Are you driving? Yes. What's your name? Kelsey. Kelsey, which vehicle were you driving? Yes. Okay, you come back here with me? Sure. Can you tell me what happened? Uh, we were driving and I looked up and that was it. I smell alcohol coming from you. You been drinking? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's come back here with me real quick. What is it you've had to drink today? Uh, a few bottles of tequila and beer. A few bottles of tequila? Yes. Like little bottles or big bottles little, or what? Little bottles, like shot bottles. First test we're going to do is the uh, walk and turn test. You're going to take nine steps forward. When you get to nine, I want you to leave your lead foot on the ground, pivot, turn around, and get back in the same position with one foot in front of the other. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 7, 11, I mean, 8. So you're gonna recite the alphabet A through S as fast as you can without singing, okay? B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Were you texting today while you were driving? Uh, Before the accident? Maybe. I don't I don't know what my you don't remember? No. Are you just paying attention to the road or were you talking on the phone? Uh, I think I looked down to tell my mom I was coming home. So texting. Okay. Really. Alright, well I appreciate your honesty.
What I need you to do is blow through the tube until I tell you to stop. A nice long breath. Keep going. Okay. The results are 0.08. That means that you're legally intoxicated for an adult, much less a juvenile. So I need you to turn around, put your hands behind your back for me, okay? You're under arrest for DUI. quite a mess here. You see all the damage you've done and people you've yeah, injured? Yeah. Who's laying across the hood of your car? Tyler? Tyler? Doesn't look like Tyler made it. Watch your head. Deep breath in and blow it all in the tube. Go. Blow, 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 blow. There you go. Now you can stop. There you go. You're at a point zero eight. Okay? You understand what that means? It means you're legally intoxicated. Severe damage to the car. Had to be amputated. Where was he at in the car? He was passing. Three, one, two, three. Okay, let's All get right him on guys. the monitor. You got severe trauma to the face. All right. No breath sounds on the left. Let's get the chest tube ready. We have a rhythm. Check yet. the blood pressure. We'll call chest x ray for portable chest. Get that chest tube getting set up. Uh, we have a cyst. We start CPR. Get the drugs ready. You have Epi. Yep, got Epi. Let me know when it's ready for the next round of Epi. Anybody heard from family? Do we call Life Evac? Probably MCV. Okay, we can call. get them back. Right, we have to I'll get call. a pulse back. Okay. Come on, Travis. Stay with us. Come on, Trevor. Ma'am, you can come up beside me. Come on, Trevor. Come on. Come on, Trevor. Stay with us. I love you. We've been trying. We've been un unable to get a pulse back. We've been giving them Epi. He knew better than to be in that car. He knew better. Come on, Trevor. Stay with us. Come on. Hold compressions. I've got no movement on the monitor. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but he's passed, okay? So time of death. 1337. Oh my god, this is a question. Grandpa. Oh my gosh. I love you so much. Man, this sucks having to go do this. I know this is probably one of the worst things you do as a police officer. All because somebody wanted to drink and drive and text their mom. It's not worth it, losing your life. Passing away at such a young age like this. Are you Mr. and Mrs. Sakamura? Yes. Hi, I'm Sergeant Hart with your county sheriff's office. This is Deputy Fretwell. Do you mind if we come in and talk to you for a minute, please? Sure. You guys are the parents of Tyler, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we're here today to bring some bad news. Tyler passed away today in an automobile accident um, up at Bruton High School. Um, Somebody was drinking and driving and texting, and unfortunately, Tyler did not make it. I'm sorry to have to tell you that.
there's probably a lot of emotions running through you right now. Anything the Sheriff's Department can do to help you, we're, we're more than happy to do. Where is he? Right now he's up at the morgue, and we'll make arrangements for the funeral home for you guys to have him picked up. Okay. When can we do that? We'll get that done as soon as possible. I would think my fondest memory, and there are a lot of them, was when we drove across the country. Um, and so we split up, we had two cars, and he sat in my car. And we had the dog, and the dog was eating beef jerky, and we were listening to, uh, to Unbroken on audiobook, and just listening to that great story as you're driving across, you know, the country, and just seeing all the, you know, all the mountains and the plains, and just, you know, all the way across is pretty, it's a pretty great memory. You know, a lot of times, like, his dad was gone a lot, and so he was always with me, you know, just... He was like the little dad, or the helper, or the responsible one. And I think that he, you know, would just take that to heart, but also be so good to his siblings. You know, he really treats them well, and really looks out for them, and takes care of them. When he was real little, he just, out of the blue one day, walked out of his bedroom, I think in his underwear, no shirt on or anything, with this pillow over his head. So his face, you could see the impression of his face, and he just said, I'm the pillow monster. I'm the pillow monster. All rise. Motions or any other business come forward and you should be heard. May God save the Commonwealth this time of court. You may be seated. Court will come to order. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Judge. Mr. Lambert, Mr. Roberts, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, counsel ready to proceed in the case of Commonwealth versus Kelsey Herod? Yes, sir. We are, Your Honor. Please, the court, this is Ms. Herod. I was retained to represent her in this case. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Let the record reflect Ms. Herod is present. Ms. Herod, good afternoon to you. Represented by her counsel, Steve Roberts. Commonwealth is represented by Jacob Lambert. Uh, we are here for sentencing. Uh, Ms. Herod had previously pled guilty to two counts of manslaughter by DUI, two counts of maiming by DUI, one count of DUI, first offense, reckless driving by speed, and texting while driving. Uh, have both counsel received the pre-sentence investigative report? Yes, sir. We have, okay. Judge. And you've had ample time to review that with your client? I Mr. have. There's so many people that have lost and have experienced tragedy due to this event. One small instance of Ms. Herod making the decision to consume alcohol, to get behind the wheel of a vehicle, then to compound that by driving distracted, by texting, and then the impact that occurred with the vehicle that was carrying three other individuals. What can be said to Ms. Herod to get through to her, to make her understand the impact that she's made not only on the deceased's lives, but the lives of everyone involved. What can be said to the parents of Tyler Sakamura? What can be said to the parents of Trevor LaForge, the two individuals that lost their lives because of this? The people who are probably going to suffer most from this are the parents of Mr. Sakamura and Mr. LaForge. They are in the position now that everywhere they go, every young man or woman that they see, they're going to see their child's face on the face of that person. Judge, I think in the case of, of Miller versus Alabama, Chief Justice Roberts in his dissent um, said it perfectly when he said, it's a great tragedy when a juvenile um, commits an offense, most of all for the innocent victims but also for the person who committed the offense, whose life has gone so wrong so early, and also for society, which has lost one or more of its members to deliberate violence and must harshly punish another. I would echo many of the things that young Mr. Lambert has said, um, but I, I believe President Lincoln was correct uh, when he was uh, at a small cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and said, the, the world will little note nor long remember what we say here. But 
that will never forget what they did here. Of course, he was wrong. <laughs> the world has, has cherished those words that he gave us. Marcus Aurelius told us that we are too much accustomed to attribute to a single cause that which is the product of several, and the majority of our difficulties come from that. What does that have to do with this? What, what does a Roman emperor have to tell us about these tragic events? If we simply look at the operation of the vehicle with alcohol and texting, I think we miss the bigger picture, not just for this young lady, but for all of us. There's ample evidence I presented as documents to the court from scientists today that young people are not fully hardwired until maybe 25, 26 years old. Don't throw away this valuable person, Judge, who's made a horrible mistake. Don't discard her. Don't feel you have to protect us from her. Use her to teach all of us the lessons to be learned from these facts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roberts an old-fashioned punishment, being held accountable for your choices. So in looking at the facts of the case and the duty of the court to render a judgment that is just, this is what the court's going to do. On the DUI manslaughter involving Trevor LaForge, I'm going to sentence you to 10 years in prison. The DUI manslaughter involving Tyler Sakamura, 10 years in prison. The DUI maiming involving Jalen Hanna, the broken arm, five years in prison. DUI maiming of Austin Jarvis with the broken ribs, five years in prison. DUI first offense, 12 months in jail. Reckless driving by speed, 12 months in jail. Texting while driving, fine of $200. On the DUI maimings, both counts, the court's going to suspend all five years. So five years imposed, five years suspended on each offense. The DUI first offense, 12 months, all suspended. The reckless driving by speed, suspend all 12 months. On the DUI manslaughters, Mr. Roberts and Mr. Lambert are both exactly correct. Whatever I do today doesn't bring justice to the family in bringing those children back so that they can live out their lives. I can't change that. I don't have that power. I don't have that authority. I wish I did. But on the manslaughters, the court is going to suspend five years on each. So the total sentence is 30 years in prison and 24 months in jail. 20 years and 24 months will be suspended for the entirety of your life. That's 10 active years to serve in prison. Yes. And that will be the order of the court. Yes. Thank you. Back to lockup. Two beers, two thumbs, two seconds. Two beers, two thumbs, two seconds. What have I done? What have I done? Two beers, two thumbs, two seconds. What have I done? What have I done?